is go back to maybe the uh, one of our earlier examples this was I think the first example we looked at um, where we basically had the 16 volt source here the 2.7 K resistor and a 470 K resistor sitting here and our signal source applied like so and we were able to determine the voltage gain of that particular circuit now something else I want to address here um, and in some cases this becomes a very easy calculation and in some cases it, it actually can be I, I guess quite a quite a hard calculation um, but uh, what I'd like to look at here really then is the case of finding perhaps what we might call input resistance alright so in other words if I've got a signal sitting here if I look in here and remember, I'm looking at the what we might call the AC here, input resistance. So it's the resistance that this AC signal source sees as we look in, really, to that amplifier. And we might call that R in, okay? So there's a certain input resistance that this, signal, this AC signal source will see as we look into that amplifier. Now, is that an easy calculation? Well, let's transfer that information perhaps over to here, okay? which is our AC equivalent circuit for that amplifier. Here is our signal source. What are we asking in this case? We're simply asking, well, look, what's the resistance as I look in here, all right? And so really that is the R in resistance that I'm seeing as I really look in there, okay? Now, in this particular case, you might argue that really that's not very hard. That's a very easy calculation, isn't it? What have I got here? As I look in here, what do I see? I see a 470K resistor in parallel with this. This is that beta RE of the transistor, that 790 ohm resistance, AC resistance. Okay, so really in this case, this R in is uh, equal to then 470K in parallel with that 790. And look, 790 is very small compared to what 470K, and so to a very good approximation. That input resistance is dominated by this and is approximately 790 ohms. Okay, so that's the input resistance that that signal source actually sees. We're going to be doing more with input resistance a little later on, especially when we get to looking at amplifying chips such as op amps. Okay. We'll take another example. All right. Now going back to this example that we've just recently considered, okay, um, and we're able to determine the voltage gain of this amplifier. I want to ask the same basic question in relation to really input resistance. All right. So in other words, here's my signal source over here. What is the resistance? that that signal source sees as we look into the input of this amplifier. So once again, I'm going to call that R in. What is that input resistance? It's an AC input resistance, okay? Not a DC, it's an AC input resistance. It's the resistance that my AC signal source sees at the input terminal of the amplifier. So once again, here is my equivalent circuit over here, and I'm asking the same question. I'm saying, look, what is the resistance that I see or that this signal source sees as we look in. So it's the resistance looking in here, okay? So we're gonna redraw this circuit again, a uh, simplified form of it, we'll combine these two resistors as we did before, and we will redraw this. Okay, here is the circuit redrawn. And once again, what we're trying to do is we're trying to find this resistance. This is my signal source sitting over here, that's my VS signal source. What is the resistance that we see looking in here? Now, yeah, sure, I see this 9.1K. Yeah, that's fine. But look, this is kind of messy and complicated, all right? I mean, is this resistor in series with this? No, it's not, okay? Um, this resistor's got IE flowing through it. This has got IB, okay? So basically, this guy has got what? IB plus the IC flowing through it. So these two guys are not in series. This is in fact a T-type section here. Okay, so it looks a bit messy in terms of being able to, how do we calculate, etc. 
Well, I'm going to just suggest a technique here, which I think is very easy, and it's in it's fitting with the kind of work we're doing. All right. So I'm going to say, look, look. Let's just for a moment say between here and here, we've got a voltage. Okay, that's the base, isn't it? Okay, and that's the common. So how about I call that voltage there? I'm just going to call it VB. All right. Just going to call that voltage VB. Now, in a way, what I want to do is I kind of want to look at this part of the circuit here. In other words. Forget about this for the moment, but what do I see as I look in here? Okay, what kind of resistance am I seeing? Now I know whatever I see looking in here is going to be in parallel with this 9.1. So whatever I see looking in here is in parallel with that 9.1. Okay, but I put it to you that the resistance I see looking this way in here, okay, I'll call that resistance little ri, and I'm going to say that resistance little ri is really this voltage which is VB, divided by how much current I can push in, or what's the current going in. So I'm kind of forgetting about that for the moment. I'm simply saying, if I knew that voltage, I call it VB, and I know how much current is going in there, that gives me, if you like, a measure of the resistance looking in, right, this way. And then whatever that resistance is, it's in parallel with this. Okay, so really, little ri then is VB, divided by that current. Well, what is that current? That current is simply IB. Okay, that's what that current is, is, is simply IB. So what I'm going to do then is to find this little RI is I'm simply going to take a loop now and that is the loop I'm going to consider. Okay, so if I start here on the loop I've got what? I go from a minus to a plus, I'm going to simply say that's a voltage VB. And then plus to minus I've got to drop across that, that's a minus what? IB times 2K. All right, then I've got the drop here. What's the current in here? It's IE, so it's a minus IE times 1K, and all of that is equal to zero. Now, I know that IE term, don't I? Yes, um, IE, remember, is a 1 plus beta times IB. We know that, so we'll put that into, into this expression, right? And I'll take these two terms to the other side, as we have done before. So I get what? VB is equal to, all right? I've got IB times what? 2K plus, what else do I have? Open a bracket, 1 plus beta times IB times 1K. All right? Now, I can factor out the IB. So I've got VB is really equal to IB. Open up a bracket, I've got 2K. And what's this? If we're from the previous problem, beta was 100, that's 101 times 1K, so that's what? 101K, 101K. And so that is really equal to what? IB times 103K. All right, so I'm pretty much there because now I can find what? VB over IB, and that is simply equal to what? 103K. So looking in right here then, basically I'm seeing VB divided by that current IB, I see a 103K resistance. And so really this resistance now looking in here, this R in resistance, this R in is then equal to what? It's really this 9.1K, so it's really 9.1K in parallel with what we've just found looking in here, which is 103K. All right, so really in this case, what is dominating that input resistance is really this 9.1K. That is the smaller term, significantly smaller than what you see the other side looking in here, the 103K. So that's a method that you can use then to calculate input resistance, the resistance that the signal source actually sees. Okay, let's consider another example. All right, I want you to have a look at really this circuit here. Now, once again, what we're required to do is determine the voltage gain. That's this voltage divided by this voltage over here. Our first step will be to draw the AC equivalent circuit. Now, how are you going to do that? All right. Well, you're going to put down basically the model for the transistor. So that's how you're going to start. You're going to start like this. Okay, draw the model for the transistor. There it is. Okay, I'm giving you the value, beta little re, I'm saying that's 2k, as we did before. So here's my model for the transistor, looking like this. This is beta times ib, this is our collector, uh, this is our emitter sitting over here, 
and this is the base. And of course, don't forget that, that is the base current flowing into the base, IB. All right. So there's my AC model for the transistor. Now what have I got to do? I've got to draw the AC equivalent circuit for the whole amplifier. Well, what do we do? What I suggested to you before, label the transistor, collector, emitter, and base. All right, then for drawing the AC equivalent circuit, assume that the DC source connected between here and here it's another way of representing a DC source, by the way. VCC means a DC voltage from this point with respect to the common or the ground. So replace this with a short. So in other words, as it were, bring a short across over here to enable you to draw the AC equivalent circuit. Now, you don't actually physically go and put shorts like that. Remember, you're trying to draw an AC equivalent circuit from the point of view of being able to analyze this amplifier. Okay, so... The, the source here will be replaced with a short. Capacitors are replaced with shorts so that you can draw the AC equivalent circuit. So uh, what do you think you're gonna have here? Okay, well, you've got that emitter resistor. Sure, we'll, we'll take that a step further. You've got that emitter resistor, 1K, if you like, connected to a common. There's the common. Now you've got to look at the collector. What's connected to the collector? 10K resistor, yes. Other side going to ground, but what about this 10K resistor? And then going over this side, you've got, yes, the 10K from the base to ground, the 100K from the base to ground, capacitors are short. Now I've got this 1K resistor here. Okay.